Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Darn, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode of my Nerdy Wednesday uh, little kind of series I just randomly made up. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a different bit of a different scene today, um, although it is still Nerdy Wednesday, I'm, I'm not doing anything nerdy today. Um, as I've mentioned, um, I'm doing I'm working on some content for 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 more regular Nerdio Wednesday stuff, um, which will be related to Nerdio and EUC and stuff like that. So I'm going to be going to be collaborating with somebody. I don't know quite launched that yet, um, but I've done a lot of sort of gone through the Nerdio enemy sort of portal and all that. But today, um, essentially, there's been quite a few updates recently on Windows 365, and I was lucky enough <clears throat> to be invited to a so to a roundtable event, a partner roundtable event. So it's through Cubasis, obviously. But Scott Manchester was in Australia. He was in he was in Sydney at that time, um, and there was a there was a day event which a couple of my colleagues went to. Um, but I, I went to some Nerdio sort of training and then there was a, an afternoon event which was a round table just for partners and it was a total total NDA so I'm not going to be at all, I'm not talking about anything that was discussed in the in the meeting uh, or during that session um, because you know Microsoft MVP I know better than that <laughs> however what I do want to discuss is some things that were, were publicly announced funnily enough on that day and then around that day um, so Scott made Scott made some some really nice. You know, first of all, it was great to meet Scott. Uh, I've met him a few times actually at Nerdio Cons and whatnot, but it was great to see him in person again. We had a great catch up around Windows three sixty five, and um, what I'll say is, it's, it's, I'm, I'm excited personally. I'm, I'm not, it's taken me a while to get there with Windows three sixty five because I've always struggled. Um, you know, I've, I've been brought up on AVD. Do you know what I mean? That's been like my bread and butter for so many so many years now. Um, and just just for for Windows three sixty five to be put, being pushed into a limelight quite a lot, um, it's just taken me a while, I suppose, to get excited about. It. But I'm excited about it, and a lot of my content now moving forward is going to be some Windows three sixty five stuff. I think next week as well on Wednesday, um, there's a couple of these features I actually want to talk about. But let's move into it. So on, on LinkedIn, last week Scott made a, a few uh, really really cool announcements. So the first one was a public preview for Windows three sixty five cloud apps. Um, so this is, again, with Windows 365, what we need to remember, it's a SaaS solution, right? I know it's always easy to compare it to AVD, but AVD is the PaaS solution for VDI, for Microsoft, whereas this is the SaaS solution, right? So it's aligned to, to uh, SaaS workloads, you know, um, Office 365, Teams, you know, collaboration, modern work, right? Um, so this is where they go. They, now, so they're kind of going full SaaS with this. So it's going to provide that full SaaS solution. Um, so you can see a little bit here, but I, I kind of looked into it a bit more. And there was this blog done by Serena Zeng at Microsoft. Um, so it tells you a little bit about information about what it is. So it's, it's, it's obviously a new feature. It's going to allow admins to give users access to individual apps hosted on a cloud PC. So if you think about it, this is very similar to published apps. It's just published apps, really. I mean, but it's great that... Because again, look, don't forget, AVD has some cool features, right? It's it's only it's only you know it's only right that some of those features go to Windows 365. Because again, if you're an organisation wanting to look to move to from you know transition to AVD, or you've used AVD, you know what you actually got a use case for Windows 365, then you might want some of those features still. But we really like published apps, so you know we still want to use those. And this is where it's it's you know kind of trying to bridge that gap. Obviously, it's it's, it's specific to SaaS apps, and it's it's. You know, it's designed for enterprise customers as well. It says, um, so you can basically get streamlined app delivery for frontline seasonal or remote workers. It's going to provide information workers with that sort of line of business apps they require, uh, supply management with Windows 365 and Intune integration. So the way I see it, right, so it tells you a little bit about how to set it up here. So you can still create the admin, the, the sort of um, provisioning policy, but rather than giving them a full uh, PC kind of experience. You give them the, the cloud apps only. And again, you, you dictate, is it is it enterprise, is it frontline? Uh, and again, with it being frontline, is it shared or is it dedicated? Um, so again, with that, that shared um, sort of use case, it's kind of, uh, it's like for a short period, so use it for a short period of time and, and don't require sort of data to be preserved. So the way I see that is like um, a warehouse. If you, if you think about people who work in a warehouse, you know, they, they, they kind of deal with machinery and stuff like that. They want to they run their apps, they want to do their work, and then the shift changes, a new shift comes on, and they'll use the same shared um, resource. 
Um, so very much aimed around that frontline cloud PC sort of area, but it's just published apps. Um, and again, I, I think it's a, I, I've always liked that feature from a, from an uh, ABD perspective. So I think it's really, really cool that it's finally coming to um, Windows 365. So that's currently in, in public uh, preview. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some content around that, um, hopefully uh, moving forward in the next few weeks. And then Scott also announced the Windows CC5 admin co-pilot experience. So this is very much around, um, so it's not, it's using co-pilot to troubleshoot issues. So it's very much an admin tool, right? So for, for your end users, it's, although it will improve their experience, it's not really aimed at them using it. It's aimed at us admins. Um, and again, it's to help with, with, with troubleshooting, right? So getting quick insights into, you know, your deployments, diagnosing any issues, um, and then, and then you know, maybe evaluating user performance, might to recycle our PC. So it's about, it's more about kind of, the way I would see this is ongoing <clears throat> sort of improvement. So that life cycle of Windows 365 in your environment, that, that cloud PC life cycle and keep on improving it. Uh, obviously, Nerdio does a lot of that cool stuff as well, and Windows 365 integrates in Nerdio. But this is a really cool feature that I can see um, a lot. A lot of admins will be kind of happy about that because again, just it's just stuff that you can do in AVD, right? With it being a past solution, <clears throat> you integrate it with AVD Insights, and you have all that information. Uh, and then again, with Hybrid as well, you can obviously integrate with Endpoint Analytics. So I, I feel like this is this is kind of the back end of this will be Endpoint Analytics, but it's got that Copilot AI. Um, cool stuff you could say that you know that cool AI layover which is kind of going to interpret all that information for you um, so that was another really really cool announcement um, I'm going to skip to Tom Hinkley who made a really nice so, right I'm a, I'm a I'm, I think I'm in a minority because I, I love DevBox right I've, I've loved it since it um, since it kind of came out and since it was released and but I've always been confused as to where it sits in the <clears throat> In the sort of ecosystem of Azure and, and maybe you know and, and Windows and Office system, Microsoft 365, the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem. Because for me, it's a VDI tool, right? It's a it's a VDI um, solution that's kind of dedicated to that developer use case. But when you talk to people at Microsoft, it's always been oh no, no that's Azure. And and I actually spoke, <coughs> I was speaking to Scott about this in a bit more detail, and he was like traditionally. What, so historically what happened was with DevBox, it was just it was a, an internal development team that, that built it and it just made, it just got built into this solution and, and they obviously released it. But it was like I said, it was in it sat in the Azure section, even though it's VDI. Now what's happening is that team is going to move over to um, to work under Scott's team. So the, the developers will be and, and the DevBox solution as of the first of November will no longer be in its current iteration. Basically, going to move into Windows 365, so it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be another SKU or what. That you know that there's not a lot of information around it. Um, all we know is those t same capabilities are going to be coming to um, Windows 365. So again, this is for me. This is a natural move. This is where it should be for me because it's a. It is a dedicated. It's a dedicated desktop for for a developer. Um, so you know it's going to do a more personalized, consistent cloud PC sort of feel to it. Um, and again, it'll be all managed through Intune. Again, DevBox, for those existing customers who are using Microsoft DevBox, you can still use the Azure portal, so that will stay. However, as of the 1st of November, you won't be able to register any new DevBox or Dev Centers, essentially, is, is what um, we're being told. Um, so it tells us here, as effective November the 1st, DevBox service will stop accepting new customers. Customer interested in the DevBox capability should reach out to the Microsoft account team. Existing DevBox customers can continue to use and expand and expand their DevBox deployments with, with you know while the new capabilities have been introduced. So uh, it's going to be over a couple. It's not going to happen overnight, right? It's going to be over a, a, th a few different, a, a few months and years probably. But I'm excited about this because again, I, I'll be honest. This is one of my favorite solutions, right? I, I really do like this as a solution, and I've, I've worked with a lot of customers on it, and. I think, again, developers, if you're watching, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel developers would really like the solution. When I've spoken to devs and done demos for them, they really liked it. And for me, <clears throat> one, one, a, it gives control back to developers a little bit about their look, about their own instance. Whereas AVD, even though they have set, even might they have, they might have personal host pools, I feel like they still don't get the same level of access they normally would with, it, with their own physical personal device. Because again, rightfully so, organizations are, are, are hesitant to give local admin rights 
when it comes to session hosts, you know, in AVD. Whereas I think um, with with Windows 365, obviously, because it's more of a personal device, and DevBox as well was a very personal feel to it. There was the option to give local admin rights. And also with you know being able to do their own restores and restore from a from a from a restore point and all sorts, all that sort of good stuff that you kind of um, that they want to be able to do, and they can they can they can do multiple dev boxes as well. So um, it's it's a good move. I think it's a really great move, and I'm I'm really happy by it. Um, and I think there's going to be some really really cool stuff coming over the next uh, eighteen to the twenty four months on that. Okay, so. Um, continuing with the sort of Scott Manchester announcements that he dropped again, this was the day before the event, I think. Um, Windows 365 boot, and he was, he was talking a little bit about that um, and, and what that does. Is, so it's a, it's enables direct login to, to your cloud PC, and it's going to reduce uh, friction for users and minimizing that sort of complexity. And again, there's like a little article here uh, around that, and I think I, um, I think I found one as well. Yeah, what what is Windows 365 boot? Um, so again, this is uh, Alina Luffler doing doing this this um, blog. <clears throat> so um, it's in the connection said it's an improved experience. It's generally available now, which is really cool. Um, so uh, she's out any device running Windows 11, 365 boot allows you to sign in directly to your cloud PC as the primary Windows experience. Ah, okay. So almost like for me, this is sounding like it's changing your. Uh, if you've got a Windows 11 laptop, you're just directly booting into Windows 365 rather than your own local OS. So that's interesting. So it's built in access to Windows 365 Connection Center. Users with multiple cloud PCs can choose their cloud PC during logon and access all device actions to cloud PCs, including view, manage, restart, troubleshoot. That is very interesting. Um, and you've got enhanced sort of troubleshooting diagnostics as well. Um, so this will be interesting. I think I'm going to try and I'll try and get a Windows 11 device and try and do a bit of, truck, bit of demoing around this because this sounds really interesting to me. Um, it's got smoother connection experience. Ooh, built-in cross-region disaster recovery as well, which sounds really you know. Again, that's a use case for Windows 65, isn't it? The sort of BCDR stuff. So I think that's quite powerful as well. Um, so yeah, another another great another great release, right? Another great feature coming. What I can say is there's loads more enhancements. I, again, I'm not allowed to say, you know, I'm, I'm, they're very early on in, in development, but what I would say is watch this space and, and uh, Windows 365, if you, if you work with it as an admin, it's there's some exciting, exciting stuff to come. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, ooh, so this is another feature. This was announced a while ago, right? But I know it's, it's, I'm just a bit late coming to it, the point in time restoration. So I'm gonna do some, some videos or video about this as well. Um, allowing restore points. So if you're an admin, again, if you're a user, sorry, when you're using Windows 365, you can restore to a previous version if your uh, personal desktop gets corrupt. So I thought all oh, this was very, very cool. And again, it just just screams like this. They're, they're spending so much sort of development time and effort into creating creating this this user experience. And uh, like I said, and, and again. Micro, this is not this is not taking over from it's not about AVD or Windows 365 one or the other. Got to look at the use case and what fits that use case better. Yes, you know Windows 365. If, if you're doing a laptop refresh or you know a, a, a personal PC refresh, it kind of makes sense. But there's a lot of other use cases as well, especially with stuff like Frontline coming in now, um, and and they do kind of um, sometimes they, they fall you know they cross uh, over sometimes. But there, there is room for AVD and Windows 65 in your environment. It just all depends on the use case. So that was just kind of what to go for some recent announcements and some of the cool stuff around Windows 65. I'll be doing some more demo stuff. Um, and I'm hopefully getting some more content on that. I'm going to be releasing an SC900 series very shortly. I'm just recording that at the moment. Um, and that's going to be for, for level one uh, IMIT geek members. So if you're not a member, you can see the link in the description. Uh, get a member. I've got loads of content already. So my exam content is coming back. I'm starting to work on more content around that. So, so keep an eye out for that. I'm also going to be doing another live session next week. So my live session is actually going to be a bit different. It's going to be, I'm going to go through some um, practice questions for the AZ900. Um, so I've always said I want to do something like that as well. So if you're doing the, if you're prefer, preparing for the AZ900, I'm going to be doing a live session. I'll also be giving away some of these t-shirts, so keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, and that, I've got some cool stuff coming on my channel, so make sure you are subscribed, hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. So thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, goodbye.